Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from CreativeSoundLab.tv. Well, it's just going to be a quick video today. We're going to be uh, we're going to be comparing uh, the Bloom Line configuration versus the mid side configuration with the same microphone. Uh, usually, you can't compare these back to back or apples to apples because when you go from uh, one technique such as the XY and then you go to the mid side, all of a sudden you have to use different mics to be able to use something that's a figure eight. Um, it'll be a quick comparison today, but I've done a ton of filming for my new course about overhead techniques, and really just how to get a really great drum sound. Uh, it addresses issues like weak drums, thin drums, uh, drums that just don't sound coherent, uh, phase issues. It covers everything. It covers a lot of the basics and some advanced concepts. So it's a great way to support Creative Sound Lab. If you like the show here, uh, it's a great way to keep this show going and also to support my family as well. Now, I'm actually packing my bags tonight and heading out tomorrow to Summer Nam. So if you're gonna be in Nashville uh, or going to Summer Nam, hit me up on Facebook. So for today, we're checking out the Bloom Line versus Midside. Uh, again, Bloom Line is just basically two microphones that are set up in an XY, but they happen to be a figure eight. And so it's a little bit different sounding than XY. For some reason, I just, I really like the sound of Bloom Line. This R88, it's got two ribbons in it, so it's two microphones looking down at the drum kit like this. And it just has a really solid, cohesive sound that's really hard to screw up. Uh, but aside from that, um, we have the mid side technique. And if you just turn the microphone by 45 degrees, then one microphone looks straight down, the other looks to the side. And so we can treat it like a mid side technique. It is a little different because it's not cardioid down the middle, it's a figure eight down the middle. But this gives us an opportunity to compare apples to apples using the same microphones. Two very different sounding techniques. And we're gonna hear that right now. Uh, so first up is the Bloom Line. Next up is the mid side, and I did my best to match the stereo width, so here it is, mid side. Okay, so here they are back to back with just the overheads, and then I want to do them back to back with the close mics. Okay, interesting comparison. I don't know what makes the cymbals sound so weird in the mid side. Perhaps I need to decode using hardware. Uh, I know they make boxes that decode mid side, so 
you know, this technique, I, I do it in the DAW. Um, I'm sure that the techniques sound different. Now, if you're unsure about how to do mid-side technique, uh, it's actually pretty simple. It just takes a few different steps in the DAW. I actually just filmed this for my course on overheads. Uh, again, check out the link in the description below if you want to get that. It's on sale now. But here's a little bit of snippet from the course about how to set up mid-side in the DAW. Uh, we have uh, one track here, the mid cardioid, which is from our small diaphragm, looking straight down. Then we have the side fig eight, which is the large diaphragm in figure eight. It looks out to the sides. So when you do your recording, you end up with two tracks. And what you want to do is make a copy of this side. Now the way that figure eight works is that the stuff coming in from one side is the opposite polarity of the stuff coming in from the other side. And so in theory, you could just double this side microphone, flip the polarity on one, and hard pan them. And you could have actually one, two, three different tracks to have a stereo recording. So that's what we're gonna do. So take your side mic, go ahead and create a new track, and copy the recording of that side mic. Then we're going to uh, flip the polarity on one, Okay, and in logic, that's what it looks like to flip the polarity. And we're going to hard pan them. What I usually like to do is uh, send these two microphones, or these two tracks, to its own fader so I can manipulate the width. Uh, the more of this side mic we have, the wider the stereo image that we have. So it's nice just to have it to its own fader. Uh, put both of these... Uh, tracks to the same volume. So it could be anything, but it's got to be the same. I would enter it, I would key it in manually. For this, I just have it set to unity gain. It's not a visual thing. I, I, I key it in or I go to, to the default of unity gain. They have to be the exact volume. So they're hard panned, they're the exact volume, and one of the sides, the, polar the polarity is flipped. It's going to its own fader, and then it's coming to meet up with the mid mic here at the overhead uh, track. So I have both the mid and the side coming into this overhead track here. And that's where I can process everything together. EQ, compression, anything I want. So here's a little bit about what the uh, drum sound with just the mid. Okay, and it's a really solid, tight sound. I mean, as you do expect from a single mic and mono. But what's cool is, is that as we bring up the side mic, the sound will still be really tight, really phase coherent with everything on the kit, but it'll just be in stereo. So you'll have to choose how wide you want it. That's one of the advantages is perfect summing to mono, but also the ability to adjust the width later. So when I first started recording, I had a KM184 and a 414. I don't even think I had a matched pair of large diaphragms or small diaphragms for that matter. So this is a great technique. If you have two mismatching microphones and one of them can go to that figure eight, it's definitely something looking into. I'll be hanging out in the comments below and hit me up on Facebook if you're going to Summer Nam.